All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. And Yahweh Shah is the name of his beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. This is Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp. And today's lesson is entitled, What is the Holy Ghost According to the Bible? What is the Holy Spirit according to the Bible? Right? Because a lot of these Christians, they say when they catch the Holy Ghost, they shucking, they jiving, they so-called speaking in tongues and all kind of madness and folly. Right? So we got to break down these things properly to get the proper understanding of what the Bible is talking about. Is the Holy Ghost when you gyrate, shucking, jive, and twerking the church? Is that the Holy Ghost? So we're going to find out what it is according to the Bible. So we're going to start off with John. Matter of fact, before we even start off with John, let me get Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Classic precept. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It say, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So in order for you to even understand the Bible, you have to have wisdom first. Now, wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Let's get that in Job chapter 28, verse 28. It's the book of Job chapter 28, verse 28. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So the fear of the Lord, that's wisdom. When you have the fear of the most high, that's you having wisdom. So in order for you, in order, so like in order for you to even understand the Bible, you have to fear the most high. Right, you have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, as it states in Sirach chapter 21, verse 11. All right, now, so let's get John chapter 14, verse 26. It say, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, you got certain men out here who read this scripture and they apply this to themselves, right? You had a brother in New York that goes by the name of Tazadakia. He said he was the Holy Spirit in the flesh, man. He, he calls himself the comforter. Is that in the Bible? Is that precept upon precept? No, man. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of wisdom. Let's get that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter nine, verse 17. Right. Again, it's not when you shucking and jiving in church. That's not you catching the Holy Ghost. You catching the Holy Ghost is you receiving the spirit of wisdom from the Most High. Let's bring this up. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter nine. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter nine, verse seventeen. It say, and thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. Right? So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. So when you have the Holy Ghost, that means you have wisdom. Again, it's not you shucking and jiving in the church with a pork chop in your hand, you're gyrating and you're so-called speaking in tongues and all that nonsense and folly, man. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of wisdom. And it reads, For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. All right? So now, let's go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. This is the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It say, but ye shall receive power that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. Why? Because wisdom is a powerful thing to receive, man. That's why in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, Christ, Hamashiach, Yahweh, I said, look, his disciples will receive power. And that's power on a physical level. We actually going to have spiritual power. But we have power right now on a low level because we have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Don't they say knowledge is power? 
And that's according to the scriptures, man. Let's get Proverbs. I want to say it's 29. Right? Bear with me. Because the scriptures say, By wisdom shalt thou make war. Right? So bear with me. It might be Proverbs 24. All right. Proverbs chapter 24 and 6. Come. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Right? So before you go to war, you have to sit down diligently and meditate on how you about to go about this war. You need to know how much soldiers you're going to have. You need to know the resources that your soldiers need in order for them to have a, a prosperous war. Right? You got to sit down and actually count the cause. I believe it states that in Luke, the 14th chapter. Matter of fact, let's bring that out. So we can actually nail this point. This book of Luke, chapter 14, verse... Thirty-one, Luke chapter 14, verse 31. Oh, what king going to make war against another king instead of not down first and consult of whether he be able with 10,000. Salakia, whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000 or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage in desire of conditions of peace. Right. So even before you make war, you have to have diligent inquisition and you have to uh, uh, um, extremely go into meditation on how you about to make this war. man. Right. You can't just go out there with a ch like a chicken with your head cut off. You got to really use the spirit of wisdom. Right. So going back to Proverbs chapter 24, verse six, it says, by, for by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. So you have to have wisdom before you go out there and war. Right. It's not all about throwing up your throwing up your dukes right and, and swinging man you a damn fool man you brother brother just gonna throw up his dukes and just start swinging you're gonna get knocked out man right because when even in war there's is there's a uh, strategic how do you how do you say it there's a strategy right you have to be strategic right you have to have good defense right you have to utilize your breathing right you have to learn how to uh, move your feet around. You have to you have to have good foot movement. You have to have all these things in order for you to actually win a battle. It's not just about you throwing up your, your dukes and throwing punches, man. So you have to have the spirit of wisdom within everything you do, man. Hey, man, when you drive in a car, you got to have wisdom. You ain't just going to get in the car and just hit the gas. All right? Okay. So um, it say, and in a multitude of counselors, there is safety, right? So you have to seek out counsel as well. The scriptures say a proud man is not daunted with fear, right? He not, he not going to seek out counsel because he's a strange and a proud man. As it states in Sirach, I believe it's the 32nd chapter, the 17th verse onto the 19th verse. All right. So now let's get another precept on wisdom. Let's get um a good book to read upon wisdom is Wisdom of Solomon, of course. But you also have I believe it's the Rock, the 24th chapter, and uh Sirach 24 and 24. It say, Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may conform confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and beside him there is no other Savior. Right? So you got to cleave unto the Heavenly Father when you're being afflicted, right? When you catch your hell, and also when you prosperous, right? When you prosperous, when the Most High blessing you, you got a good job going on, right? Your, 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 your bills go, your bills getting paid on time, right? You're, you're kind of driving around in that, that nice whip, all right? You got children, right? You got a wife, right? All these things, you got to still give thanks unto the Most High. Don't get proud. Don't wax fat. You still got to uh, uh, say your prayers and supplications to the Heavenly Father, even when you're not being afflicted. 
So let's go to verse 25. He filleth all things with his wisdom as Pisom and Tigris in the time of the new fruits. He maketh the understanding to abound like Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of the harvest. He maketh the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light and as Gion in the time of vintage. So wisdom is also compared onto water. That's why Christ, Hamashiach Yahweh said in John chapter 7, verse 37, if any man thirsts, let him come unto Hamashiach and drink. All right? Also in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Right? Right? Because Hamashiach Yahweh he is a walking embodiment of the Lord. He is the water, man. Huh? All right? So, that's what the Holy Spirit is according to the Bible, man. Stop letting your Christian pastor lie to you. Right, he read John 10 and 10 and he wing it. Right, he read in John 3, 16. He closed in the book and he playing a choir, man. Right, he tell the choir, play that song. Talking about I can feel the presence of the Lord. No, no, man. A lot of you Christian churches is not telling the truth. You lying to the people and you deceiving the masses of the Israelites. You will be judged for that according to Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 10 Je uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 21 okay Ezekiel the 13th chapter right a lot of precepts so with that man that was a quick cold cut through the spirit Lord willing it was edifying Shalom